YouTube, I didn't see you there. What is poppin' people? It's your boy out of order back in the house. All right, guys. Now, welcome back to the channel, guys. This is a series where I teach you guys everything you need to know about After Effects. But without wasting any more time, guys, you guys already read the title of the video. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to do S shake, how to make shakes, impacts, and other cool stuff like that. So nevertheless, guys, leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and let's jump right into the video. So I'm back on this project file again. This is the edit I've been doing in my how to do velocity, how to do pan crop, and now we're gonna do shakes on it. So as you can see, we already did the pan crop, we already did the velocity, all that's left to do is just shake and then eventually color grade and effects. So let's get on to shake. Now for shakes, there's several ways you can do it. Some people add the shake just directly on their clip, some people do it on adjustment layers, and other people use a very weird combination of all three, and I sometimes do that as well as transform. So let's get on to it. So for shake, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna control alt y to make an adjustment and we're just gonna add S shake on it. And as you can see, we got the glorious S shake next to the little raptor. Now I'm not gonna lie, the default S shake settings are absolutely terrible. You should never use them. The first thing I always do is mess with the frequency. Eight is just way too fast. So I'm gonna make it something like three. And then motion blur, I always make sure that's enabled. But first, before we can even get onto shakes, we gotta look at what we're shaking first. So as you can see, this is the edit we got. And that's what we're going to be shaking for now. We got a part of him running. We got a part of him pulling the gun out and then shooting. So let's do shakes on all of this. So as you can see, for the running part, this is pretty easy to do. Let's turn this layer back on so we can see what we're working with. As you can see, he's running. Now for running, I usually would have X shake on. Usually a majority of the time, I always lower the X shake because I feel like it's just way too strong. But before I can even do that, let me explain what everything does here. So the first things first, seed. You always want every single shake to be a different seed. Unless you're doing some weird repetition, make sure every shake is a different seed. Otherwise, all your shakes will look the exact same and it just kind of defeats the whole purpose of having a unique shake. Second thing, we got to learn what each of these does. So X random amplitude is how much it goes to left and right. Frequency is how fast it goes from left to right. Y is pretty self-explanatory. It's how much it goes from up and down. Frequency, same thing. And you don't really need to mess with the wave. So that's like if you want to get really, really nitpicky with it. And then Z shake is how much it goes boom forward so let's see usually i don't use z shake a lot of the time i feel like it looks stupid but i usually sometimes what i'll do is have z shake just make the frequency really slow so like 0.5 and then tilt shake, I almost always have on. I don't know why it's not on by default. Like I said, these default settings are absolutely horrible. So never use the default. I always turn this on and it's essentially just rotation. So you want that on. Now let's get on to the actual settings. So amplitude is how much shake you want. I usually do, honestly, I don't even know. This thing switches from time to time. So we'll just stick to one for now. Frequency is how fast your shake is. Z distance, you don't really need to mess with this. I only ever do that when I'm doing motion graphics most of the time. But anyway, as you can see, we got this over here and we got him running and we got him pulling this out but another thing i want to mention is we got some clipping on so as you can see even though we have wrap x and y enabled it still looks horrible and the reason for that is because we mess with all of these scale settings and if you mess with any scale or any transform or sometimes if you just have like random effects they'll screw up your little um reflection from the wrap so as you can see if we just turn it on it's gonna be bad either way so what we can do which i talked about in the pan crop video is simply add repeat tile so so I'm gonna make this like do 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 and as you can see what it's gonna do is it's basically gonna expand the edges so as you can see it's expanded up there change it from repeat because we don't want to repeat it we want it to look clean so I change that to unfold and as you can see now I do think the shake is too fast so we'll lower the frequency to like two as he runs more it's gonna decrease to zero because as you can see this is some really slow movement we could still have some shake here but I don't want to use these shake settings so we might need to make a new shake for that let's just try something like this yeah how this looks it's still a little bit too much maybe 0 0.5 will work a lot better so let's lower that and then let's also lower the frequency as well because i feel like the frequency is just too much so we'll do like 1.4 another thing you cannot keyframe the frequency i mean you can but it'll look really horrible and honestly i'm not even going to show it because of how horrible and stupid it looks so if you're really curious go give it a try but for the most part we don't need to 
And as you can see, we got a little shake there for running. Now, another thing we gotta do, which is more important, is we need a shake on this shot. Because obviously, you guys didn't come here for running shakes, alright? There's probably like one guy watching this video who's like, oh, dude, I need a shake for my running edit. No, 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 nobody's here for that. Y'all are here for impacts, alright? So let's see what we can do. Now, for impacts, the way I do it is a little differently than most people. Actually, I don't even know if that's true. Honestly, I don't know if half the stuff I say is true. But anyway, we're gonna make the frequency 4, motion blur, enable it of course actually frequency four what am i thinking no we're gonna make it two okay and then x shake i almost always have this low on impact so we'll make it 33 and i'll explain why in a minute tilt shake i'll do like three and you don't want to overdo all this stuff all right another thing you can do is where is it z shake on impacts is kind of a thing except i rarely do that and y shakes yeah y shake is fine so these are the settings i use like i said you really want to mess with all of these stuff but for the most part i don't really want the x frequency on on here i feel like x shakes just look super weird on s shake itself wow that rhymed but that was kind of stupid oh, anyway we're gonna go up here keyframe the amplitude like i said you can't even keyframe the frequency otherwise it'll just completely screw you over let's keyframe the amplitude over here make it zero over here, make it zero at the start, and then have it one in the middle. Now, what I'll usually do is depending on the shake, all right? If it's like a really like weird shot, you might want it to build up like this. But for this instance, because the shot is super fast, I don't think it'll matter too much. Let's add more shake actually. And then what I'll do now is what I mentioned in the pan crop video as well. You don't want this to ever look like this, okay? You want this thing to be flat. Otherwise, it won't ease out of it and it'll look really stupid and it will look noticeable. So what I do is I always make sure this is like this. And you're probably thinking, but bro, I want it to like look like this. Well, what you do is you hold control, make a new keyframe and drag it out like that. Hold alt to separate these. Now, another thing I do, some people will have their shake look like this, which is really fine, but I like the shakes to be more noticeable. So I usually make them like that. Let's see how this looks. Okay, that frequency is honestly too high, but it still looks kind of good. I'm Honestly, I don't even know if I should change it or not. Like, that is a really fast shake, but overall, I kind of like it. Let's just see how one looks. Okay, one looks better. Never mind. Anyway, seed. Always change it, all right? Otherwise, your shakes will all look the same. And let me tell you, the very default S shake settings are really noticeable, all right? If you've been editing a long time and have seen a lot of S shake, the default shake is the most noticeable thing in this planet of After Effects, all right? All right, guys, my headset just died, but I don't really need audio for now. But anyway, let's get back into the video. So as I was saying, like I mentioned earlier, I don't like X shake on my S shake. And you're probably wondering, what the hell, bro? Why would you do that? Well, well, this is what I do instead, all right? X shake on S shake looks horrible. So what I do is I make a new adjustment layer, put the S shake on here, and now we have pretty much all we can do. Now we can do transform. Transform will sometimes crash your after effects, all right? If you have transform, S shake, and warp all at once, you need to make them in the right order. Otherwise, they'll just completely screw each other. But what I'll usually do here is I'll honestly just make the X shake manually. So something like this. Approximately 10 hours later. All right, guys, sorry. I just spent the last few minutes trying to figure out what effect was screwing it up and i realized the s shake is actually screwing up the transform so we're just going to pretend none of this happened and instead we're just going to manually add an x position here so let's just go here here and then we're just going to make it have a subtle shake okay something like that Okay, that is way not subtle at all. Never mind. All right, let's open this, bring this up, and you guys basically see what I'm doing. All I'm doing is I'm adding manual X positioning underneath the S shake because this S shakes X thing just looks weird. I don't know. I mean, maybe you can tweak these and get it looking good, but I'm too lazy. This is how I always do it. All right, I think that's actually too fast. Let's drag this out more. Hold Alt to stretch those out. Okay, it looks simple enough, nothing too crazy. Yeah, I don't know. I have an idea. We'll lower you a lot more. Maybe we'll lower you even more. Okay, yeah, that's how I want my shake to look. So that is a basic summary of how to make shakes. As you guys can see, the most important rules, different seed. You want to make sure these settings are all different. Because like I said, if you want your X shake to be stronger, just 
boom, move that around. If you want it to be slower, just boom, you know what I mean? Y shake, boom, you can do that too. But also, you also want to enable tilt shake, all right? This is off by default, which is kind of stupid because I really like tilt shake. Uh, Z shake is also off by default, but that's a good thing because Z shake is stupid. But anyway, let's get on to actual effects with it now. So as you guys can see, you have a special option here named channels, all right? Now, this is for all you glitchy guys, all right? If you want some glitch in your shake, you just drag this out. Now, I won't lie. This does look a lot better than using something stupid like Twitch, all right? If you're using Twitch in 2022, what the hell are you doing, man? All right, don't use Twitch. Boom, something like that will look fire. So yeah, as you guys can see, if you want your, your little glitches here, you can do it like this. Ooh, that kind of looks cool, but that doesn't fit the edit at all. But you guys get what I'm talking about, all right? This is essentially just, this is just RGB splitting, all right? You can change the channels, which is pretty cool. But with all of that out of the way, guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, guys. I make videos on editing and all sorts of other cool stuff. And I really hope you enjoyed the video, guys. My Instagram, Twitter, and Discord are all in the description down below, just below the like button. So make sure to follow me because, guys, I always post gas on there, all right? There's a lot of funny stuff on there. It's a hoot, all right? That's all you need to know. So go drop me a follow. And last but not least, my editing pack is in the description down below as well if you want to buy my pre sets project files and other cool assets and other cool stuff i use so be sure to check it out once again guys thank you so much for watching happy editing and i'll catch you guys in the next video boys peace out